I wanted to make a video just going through um, the patterns and relations part one student guide just to make sure that um, you kind of have some auditory guidance for some of these things. Sometimes it's hard to read through everything single example. So um, this is your student guide. Make sure that you don't hand this back to me. This is for your notes. So keep it in your math binder at home as well as the answer booklet. <clears throat> so the only thing that you need to hand in at the end of the week will be the review booklet as well as your mental math. So um, we're looking at patterns and relations and some uh, writing expressions for patterns. So for the first um, thing that you guys are going to be doing is just understanding input and output machines. So the fancy word for this when you get into the higher grades is that this is a function. And in a function, you can put a value in and then some rule is going to be applied to it and then it's going to spit out an output. So we put something in, input goes in, and we can choose whatever that is and it will do some rule that's consistent every time and then it will spit out an output. So, usually when you get to choose your input values so that we can find what the rule is, etc., we usually pick input values like one, two, three, four, etc., something easy because we want to see what the pattern is. So for this first example, this input um, output machine has a rule of plus eight. So whatever input we put in is going to add eight to it and then it's going to spit out the output. So these are my input values. So if I put a one in, it adds eight to it and it outputs nine. If I put a two in, it's going to add eight and output will be 10. Three goes in, we add eight, and 11 comes out. Four goes in, add eight, 12 comes out. So we have a couple definitions because we can be asked for um, the input pattern or the output pattern or the input output pattern. So the input pattern is the pattern that you see and notice um, in the input column. So for this example, it starts at one and you add one each time. So it's increasing by one each time. Your output, we look at the output column and see if there's a consistent pattern. So this one starts at nine and we add one each time or starts at nine and increases by one each time. So the most important pattern that we can come up with is the input output pattern. And that is how do we go from the input straight to the output. So what's happening from here to here. So essentially when you're looking for this pattern, another way to ask for that is what is the rule for the machine? So what is the machine doing? So in this case, the rule is that you add eight to the input. So for every input, for you to get directly here, you're going to add eight. A good test to know if you have figured out this pattern is if you were to figure out the output, if you put one, um, a value of 100 in and you can calculate what the output is, then you definitely know what the rule is. Because there is nobody who's going to sit down and extend a pattern all the way to 100 just so they can figure out what the output is. So a good test is to pick an input that you're not going to spend the time doing it the long way and see if you can get directly to the output. Okay, so some machines will have more than one operation. So this one, um, our input will go in, then it's going to multiply it by two, and then it'll come sit out here and then that new value will go into this machine and we will add six to it. And then you'll get your output. So your input's gonna go 
through two machines and before you get your output. So let's look at when two goes in. So when you put a two in, it's going to multiply that by two. So then you'll end up with a four that's come out of that first machine. And then the four will go into the second machine and get six added. And then it will give you an output of 10. So I kind of made this table, hopefully, to show you that there's two calculations happening before you get to the output. And order does matter. So your input goes in times by two, add six, output. So you can kind of look here and see the pattern is um, consistent. So if we were to uh, describe the input pattern, looking at this, it starts at two and we add two each time. The output pattern is that it starts at 10 and we add four each time. The input output pattern, so from here all the way to here, is multiply by two, then add six. So multiply the input by two, then add six. So you're not doing that all at the same time. It's a two-step process. So there's some for you to try on your own and then check the answer booklet to make sure that you are doing it correct. For day two, um, we're looking at given um, a table, trying to figure out what the machines did to get from the input to the output. So there's a few um, key steps to always being able to get that answer right away. So one of the most important things is, well, we want to assume that each relationship involves two machines. So I usually like to draw my two um, blank machines. I have pictures for this one so that I can fill in what goes where. This first machine is going to be a multiplication or division for the ones that we're doing right now. And then the second machine will um, deal with some adding or subtracting. So to find this machine, it's always the same rule. We look at what the pattern in the output is. So the output is increasing by four each time. This actually becomes the rate. As long as it is per one of these, that means that you have the multiplier. So your multiplier becomes a times four. This was decreasing, then um, you either have some type of, um, you could have some division, but usually it's going to be if you have one increase over here for a large increase over here is when you'll have division. If you have a decreasing, the order of these two machines also might be switched. So you might have um, to subtract your multiplier. But I think there's only one example in this booklet um, that has something like that. Okay, so to get your multiplier, we look at the pattern of the output. Even though it says that we're adding four each time, that's just the pattern for the output but that tells us what we multiply to get from here to here. Now, if you're anything like me, you're looking at, well, if you were in the class, you'd be looking at me like I was crazy because I know that five times four is not 17. So how can the first machine be times four? Well, it is times four, but then something else is happening in this machine to bring it to that final output. So for this example, if I put a five in, if I times it by four, I would have a 20 sitting here. I know that I'm going to get a 17 when after this is done. So I need to figure out what this must have been. So in order for this to work, a 20 go in and a 17 come out, that must be a subtract three. 
So this is what this is kind of saying. I used a different input. So I started with the first one. I put the um, an input of one in the first machine, brought that up to a four. And then when I look at the table, it has an output of one. So if I am at a four and I need to become a one, I would have to subtract three. Once you have an idea of what you think it is, you've got to try it on another one. So then I put a two in. Multiply by four, I get eight. Look at my table. I need a five to be my output. And that confirmed that it was a subtract three. So then, once we know what both machines are, we're going to write the rule out in words for now. So we multiply the input by 4, then subtract 3. So my one more example that I had for you guys, I had a table here. This is me drawing my machine. So I have two empty boxes to start with. To find my multiplier, I made sure that I had um, a consistent increase. So it was increasing by 3 each time, so my multiplier is 3. Then I look here. 2 times 3 is 6, and I need it to become a 4, so I had to subtract 2. Try it here. 3 times 3 is 9, and if I minus 2, I get 7. So that confirms that a subtract 2 is my second. And I think that's it for this example. I want you to try those out. Um, this right here, guess my rule, I want you to complete it for our Zoom. Make sure that you have made um, cards and on one side of the card you put your input value and on the other side of your card you put um, and the corresponding output. So the easiest way to do that is to come up with a rule for your two machines and then create your input and output. If you're having trouble with this, please send me an email and I'll help you get started. It's really important that you have something for our Zoom meeting so that you can um, play with us. Okay, so our next day is using variables to describe patterns. So variables are a symbol or usually a letter, and that's going to represent something that we do not know or something that we want to be able to find. This is um, usually represents the input. So these are values that we can decide on and we can change. Based on what we change it to, it will spit out a different uh, output value according to whatever rule. So for this example, we have a grade six class going to a planetarium. The cost to rent the school bus is $75 and admission is $5 per student. So we're gonna make um, an input output table. And when you get to the higher grades, it's called a table of values. So if I accidentally say that, or if I already have accidentally said that, I'm referring to um, an input output table. So I like to start word problems with a zero because what that will do is it will identify um, what you're going to find is that it's actually going to identify that um, thing that we're adding or subtracting, which is really useful. Okay, so if no students go and they all cancel, then the school is still going to be on the hook for the bus fee, so the $75. If one student goes, then it's going to be the bus fee, so the $75, plus the $5 for them to get in, and so on. But not each person is going to have their own bus. So we only pay for one bus, up to however many students we can put on that bus. So what we need to do is we want to figure out the pattern rule that relates the number of students to the total cost which essentially we want to know what that input output pattern is. So how do I get from here to here? So to find the multiplier, I look for that consistent pattern, which is um, increasing by five. So I'm multiplying by five. There's my first machine. Then if I take my input of one, if I multiply it by five, 
I'm sitting at 5. To get to 80, I need to add 75. So that's how I found that my second machine was to add 75, which so happens to be the value of 0. So now we need to try and make this into an expression. So if you look up here in my input output, my input, I said that I'm going to use a variable n. You're going to find that I use n a lot because it can represent input and number of anything. So um, you don't have to use n, but you're going to find that um, for in here, I'm going to use it a lot. So I have n and that represents the number of students. So my pattern rule is to take the number of students and I need to multiply that by five and then I would add the 75. Now the number of students was my letter N. So instead of putting that time symbol in here, I just squish them together and I'm going to show you later that this actually symbolizes multiplication. The reason we don't want to put the multiplication symbol is that it looks like another variable. It looks like it could be an X and that can be confusing for later. So then once you have an expression, um, we can problem solve with it, which is the why it's very useful to have it. So what would be the total cost if there were 25 students going? Well, for the number of students, I multiply it by five. So 25 goes in, I multiply it by five, I get 125, then I need to add the 75 for the bus, and so I'm gonna get $200 for the total cost. Now let's pretend like the school ended up paying 180. How many students went on that trip? Well, the first thing I need to do is I need to take off the charge for the bus. So I'm left with $105 for admission. If each admission is $5, I have to divide that by five to figure out how many students I ended up paying for. So in this case, it was 21 students that went on the trip. So here's another one where we have um, a table of values and I want to figure out the expression for this. So to find the multiplier, I see what it's increasing by. It's increasing by four. So I know that I have to multiply by four for the first machine. Then I'm going to use that to help me figure out um, what my second machine is. So if a two goes in, multiply it by four and I get eight and I know my output is going to be 11. So if I add three, that's how I'm going to get there. So the rule is to multiply the input by four, then add three. So an expression is the way to communicate that without using so many words. The rule is four times the input plus three. My input is an N, so if I go four times n plus three, that would be an expression. This x, this time sign, looks like an x. So here's my little note here. Four n means four times n. This is the best way to write it. And don't write it n four. We always wanna put that number out front. So the expression is four n plus three. Now this is not an equation. An equation would need to have an equal sign. So this is called an expression. Okay, and then there's one more word problem. Um, if you're having problems with this one, then you'll just need to contact me. It follows along just like the other ones, finding the equation. Um, actually this one, we had to find the expression and then we used it to solve an equation. Once you have gone through and completed the booklet, um, you have a review booklet that I want you to complete. And the review booklet has um, a whole bunch of input output machines where you have to come up with the rule. 
And when you're doing the rule, I'd like you to write them as expressions. Um, and then you need to complete um, the missing values in there.